All right, guys, this is my first attempt here um, at recording YouTube video. And so I will post it up, and you guys can let me know how the quality is and what I can do better to make this a much better video for you guys. Um, this is going to be my first of many trapping series um, videos that I'm going to be posting up. But I just want to give you a little overview and a look at what I've got going on here. I am out in what would most people would call the fur shed. This is a fur garage, um, temporary until I get a fur shed built next spring. So I'll show you a little bit of the layout, what I've got going on, what my catches are for the season so far, and uh, hopefully you guys can give me some good advice on what I can do to upgrade not only the video, but maybe get some more catch. So we're going to start this look here. Okay, here we go. First part of my station here is going to be right here this is the this is going to be the skinning table this is where I start my process uh, I've got myself a couple of uh, a couple of coon packaged up right here those will be flushed down the night I've got my vacuum seal packer you know some rubber gloves um, I've got my starting skinning knives over here I've got Coming to my next step, after I get them fleshed out, I hang them up on my gamble racks, of which I have, oh, four racks that I can put them in different process of, you know, how they're going here. I can start the skinning on the table, and then once I get the legs skinned down, I can hang them up on the gamble racks. I can have four of them going and hanging at once, so I can do multiples at the same time. Um... Coming over here to the next step. Uh, the next step would be the boarding, or it would be the flashing. This next step's the flashing here. I'm turn a little bit of light so you guys can see what's going on here. Okay, I got my flashing beam and I got my box to catch all the fat underneath there. Uh, I've got all my traps on the wall that I've not put out yet this season. I've got about 30 or 40 traps I'm already using out in the woods right now. This is all the extras that I still have that still need to go out this season. I got my trapping supplies. Oh, extra knives. And my supply catalogs and all my receipts for the year. Oh, what else do I got around here? Knives. And basic tools that I need to get the job done. A roadkill log sheet. In Michigan, you have to log down and record all your roadkill that you grab for bait and for us guys that like to go and pick up the occasional roadside cash. So, yes, we all skin out roadkill just to add a little bit of fur to our pile and a little bit of cash to our till at the end of the season. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I got going on over there. I've got my cabinet down here. It's kind of buried right now, but that's got all my baits and lures and anything else I need in there. On this wall, I've got my boards for my coyotes, my coyote stretchers, and they're not the prettiest things, but they work. I've got regular board stretchers for coyotes right there. So if I have an overflow that I can't fit on the board in one week or two weeks, until they're finished drying, I can always put more on the lesser quality boards, but it keeps them drying. I've got boards for, oh, your coyotes right there. I've got some, I got some mink boards right there, male, female mink boards. Um, I've got my flushing knives right there. I got the Necker knife and one of the cheaper $15 no-name knives that I picked up from Gander Mountain. And my skinning gloves or flushing gloves right there. Um, let's see what else I got here. I got my last station it would be my boarding table. My boarding table right there. That's where I board them and put them on the stretchers. Um, I got some supplies over here, you know, screwdrivers and such for pulling the staples out at the end. I got some clothespins, staplers, and most of the supplies I need. I have my, like I said, I got my coyote stretchers, I got my coon stretchers, I got my mink boards, I got my coyote boards, and I got all the belly boards. I've got myself my uh, wire stretchers up here. I 
so far, you know, in trying out both, I prefer wooden boards when my boards are full. I put all my overflow first up onto my wire stretchers. I got my wire stretchers there, my large ones, and then my muskrat wire stretchers. I've got those there. Okay, now let's see what my catch is for the year so far. We're about two months in, and I have caught a lot less than I would hope to by this point in the season. I have up here on the wall, that's my first muskrat for the year. My muskrat's on the wall. Um, I got a rack of 10 coon right there I just pulled off last night off the boards. They were up and drying. Those 10 are just pulled off. I have... Up on this rack here, I got one coon there. I've got a nice coyote right there. And I have, oh, on this first stringer rack here, I've got uh, the first two are groundhogs. And then I've got coon, 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 and more coon over there. And then I've got on this wall, I've got another rack of, I don't know, I'd say about 20 on that rack of coon. Right there, I've got, oh, another 10 possum or so up on there. And again, possums ain't bringing too much money, but you know what? When they're out there, if I have nothing else in my sets, those possums add up at the end of the season and start to put a drop in the bucket of my gas cost. And especially my kill traps that I've got out, if you kill them, you might as well skin them. So those are up there. I've got, oh boy, what do I got there? There's a groundhog right there. The neighbor had a groundhog issue, no longer problem. He had three or four groundhogs underneath his front porch of his home, taken care of, trapped, gone, no more groundhog problem. And they're hanging on my wall. I don't know what they're worth. But they'll be sent in for the fur auction, and that'll be money as well. So, uh, let's see what we got over here. Inside here, this is my overflow that I don't have on boards yet. Oh, I've got right there a bunch of vacuum sealed. Uh, there's possums there. And trying to get a good view here for you. There are the two back packages there. There's some more coons. Uh, down at the bottom here, I got a real nice possum. That was my daughter's first catch on the line. And because it's a good size and her first catch being six years old, a little girl out on the line, that one will be mounted. So that's a nice possum. That one's cool. I've got a really nice coon in that upper bag. And in the lower bag is a really nice coyote. That Both of those will be mounted as well. Um, yeah, my taxidermy guy, he's overflowed with my work right now, and as I get it back, you will see what I've got. But that is, that is basic tour of my fur garage, and my catch for the year. Uh, subscribe, like me, and uh, give me some advice on making better videos, and as of my catch, what I can do to improve my skills here. I'm about a eight, nine, ten year trapper and still self-taught, learning what I can online by reading books and uh, coming across other people's traps in the woods and learning from theirs. So that's kind of what I got going on. Um, been a hunter much longer than that. But as far as the trapping game goes, I'm always looking for advice and stuff that suggestions on where I'm making mistakes. I'm learning. But being in the game five, six years on trapping, uh, doing it as hard as I can for at least the last three or four. I'd like to say that I'm pretty good at what I do, but I've always got room for improvement. So, you know, again, subscribe, like these videos, and uh, hit me up with some messages and some comments down below so I know what's going on here, and I'm always going to be reading them. Thank you.